Maybe Winnie the Pooh character got their own movie. Tigger, Piglet, Christopher Robin. Even the goddamn Halephalum somehow got its own movie. They had to actually make two movies called Winnie the Pooh just to remind you who the main character is. Well, nevertheless, we're gonna look at the Tigger movie today. The bouncy, bouncy, charming character that gives us an almost bouncy, bouncy, charming movie. Tigger, as you probably would have guessed, is bouncing all throughout the Hundred Acre Wood, kind of annoying his friends, but kind of delighting his friends. But one day he realizes being the only one can be, well, kind of lonely. So he decides to look for more Tiggers, and after talking to Owl, he says that he has to find his family tree. He takes this quite literally and goes searching through the woods to find an actual family tree. Rue joins him, as well as his other friends, but quickly they figure out there is no tree to be found. Feeling bad, Root decides to get everybody together to write him a letter from his family. A family of Tiggers that doesn't exist, but still show their support. Tigger gets so excited at this letter and somehow confuses that they're going to come over the following day. This of course puts his friends in a predicament and they have to figure out whether or not they tell Tigger that the family isn't real or they have to pretend to be his family. You can guess which one they pick. Okay, so this movie is not particularly strong in story, but none of the Winnie the Pooh movies are supposed to be. They're supposed to be simple in story, but emotionally heavy. The problems and dilemmas are not the big focus. The big focus is how it impacts the characters and how they work off each other and how their different personalities can, for lack of a better way of putting it, bounce off each other. And for the most part, we get that. Along with some really great animation that not only surprisingly does the facial expressions very emotionally, I mean, there's only two dot eyes and yet somehow they get across so much emotion, but also in that old school sketchiness. You kind of look at the line work and it looks like something almost out of the book. Look at all the lines on Tigger. No two stripes are the same. They're all so sketchy and seem so alive somehow. The backgrounds are also phenomenal. I watched this in fall and I'm so glad I did because this takes place in fall and winter. And good lord, they're so gorgeous. It's a different kind of Disney background that you don't really see at that time when they were doing anime and movies. Maybe you saw a little bit in Lilo and Stitch with the watercolor, but you never saw this kind of style. It's very simple, but very beautiful and very atmospheric, which is what I think Winnie the Pooh is. Things start to go downhill, both figuratively and literally, in the third act. I won't go too much into spoilers, but as you would probably guess, this is a liar-revealed story where somebody keeps a secret from somebody to keep them happy, but then the person finds out, they get really angry, can't accept that the people were doing it for a good reason, can only see that they lied, and then they go and try to get into even more trouble or do something really stupid, and the friends have to go and help, and somewhere there's an understanding about how everybody is happy again. It's so rare that these stories work because they rarely add anything else. That's the drama, the drama that we've seen a million times and is tired and cliche, and sadly, this is kind of the same thing. Not only boring and cliche, but it does stuff I feel like the Winnie the Pooh universe doesn't really do. The climax of the movie, yeah, there's a climax, problem number one, has to deal with them outrunning an avalanche and not falling off a cliff. The original ends with them just walking across a creek. That's more what these stories were about, not how we gonna get off of this rock while we're falling to our deaths. It just feels so phony and forced. Almost as forced as Jerry Springer references and Marilyn Monroe references and... Yeah, sometimes they really miss the mark with this. But for at least two-thirds of the movie, they're right on target. They once again bring back the Sherman Brothers to do the songs and they're fantastic. Well, most of them. There's a bluesy one that's a little weird, but the others are hummable, have brilliant lyrics, and they're just... Oh, it's the Sherman Brothers! I just love hearing their stuff! The characters as well are still incredibly charming, too. I don't know why they've never botched up these characters. Wayne the Pooh is still Wayne the Pooh, Tigger is still Tigger, Piglet is still Piglet. Maybe because the idea is to keep them so simple, they don't really need to add that much. And that's exactly what they do. They just let them be themselves, and they are just so likable. Which just makes it all the more shameful when you see it works to such a cliché climax. Even the message of the movie you can figure out very early on, and yet it still waits until the very end to reveal it. But again, I really have to give credit to the things it did right. You never do see the Tigger family, which I think would have been a mistake. They do still keep the majority of it very simple, and they still nail these characters perfectly. So yeah, if you're looking for something that's not especially big and epic, except what it tries to be big and epic, and that comes across as kind of awkward, this is a very nice, charming, simple movie, which is what I think most people are looking for when they see a Winnie the Pooh movie. I don't think it's among one of the greater Winnie the Pooh movies, but I still think it's worth checking out. Bounce on in and take a look.